welcome everyone. Hi everybody. To the Mary and Jerry podcast. Happy Easter. It is. We can say that now. That's right. And Easter lasts for 50 days, so we can say that in the next podcast too. <laughs> yeah. And then it'll be time for summer. And there you go. Uh, we hope you all had a wonderful, blessed Easter. You were able to be with family and... If you have little ones in your life, I don't know if you do the Easter bunny or what have the you. The Easter seems, beagle, like it Charlie seems Brown. It to be very controversial these days. So A bunny is controversial? Whether or not you celebrate, yeah, if you do like the Easter bunny compared to just have an Easter basket not given to you by anyone but your parents. Don't you have I mean, your Easter bonnet? Dun, 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 yes. dun, dun. What? Well, typically, I mean, this year I didn't have Easter an Easter bonnet. Come on, I'm I singing know the a movie song from one, of, one and, of your favorite um, movies. What's her name? Uh, Wizard of Oz. Uh, Judy Garland. Judy Garland, yeah. Judy Garland. How can um, you, you, you watch all of her movie. musicals? I do. Clang, clang, clang. I love clang, me some Judy. Goes that trolley. Trolley, that's Meet Me in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, what else you got? Come on. I think that's it. That's all you remember. I'm traumatized by the clang, clang, clanging of the trolley. <laughs> I love the cl- I love that song. I, clang, clang, clang. Yes, with I, the I, I know you and your show tunes. Da, 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 went the bell. Anyway, so thump, yes, thump, Easter thump, was my heart Easter. Beat. It was a very good Easter. We got to play with trucks, trucks in the dirt with the, our with, with our, our grandson, grandson, and then we ate like large amounts of German donuts, ham and lamb. We made the German and taters. Donuts. All you the keep food. talking about all the things. I just want to talk about the German donuts. Yes, I know. You were very sad this year because it's we f- only made a single, single batch. Single batch. It's the first time ever in our married life we've only made a single batch of German donuts. You know why? Well, because we don't need we two don't dozen need donuts. two dozen German donuts <laughs> left over. No, they expend our Reich. <laughs> they were so good, though. I, I just every that's time why I, you only make them once a year. I know. I bite into because it because it's, it's like, hard oh. to exercise restraint. There is no restraint with there German no donuts. There is no restraint no, for that's German very true. donuts. Anyway, speaking of food. Which we do a lot on we this do. podcast, just to be clear. We talk about food We do, a lot. but today we wanted to talk about entertaining with a purpose, entertaining with intention. So we started this conversation talking about cooking together in the kitchen. And then somebody's <laughs> like, we don't really cook together in the kitchen. I said, well. Th- you stir. That's not all you speaking, do. Technically speaking, that's true. I'm allowed to stir and um, peel, peel vegetables. Open cans. You make a pretty mean breakfast, though. That's open, like your open thing. Open tight jars and take out the trash. And do the dishes. And do the, yes, and <laughs> clean up afterwards. I That's pretty much what I am okay, allowed but to do. I also do almost all of those things except for the trash and the dishes. Technically, yes. Technically, that would be you an do not actuality. Open tight jars. Well, I, I got that, that tight jar opener thingy. Yeah. That we ordered, and that's been helpful. Yeah. Don't ask me what it's called or where I got it. I, I ordered think it's it called from the Amazon. Tight jar opener thingy. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's a registered trademark. But we wanted to talk about entertaining with intention, right? Because we're, I don't know about you, audience, listeners, peoples. <laughs> um, we, um, Jerry and I are very different personalities. I don't know if you've picked up on that or not. We've actually explained wow, that to you. you wow. Jerry is think not. about that statement. Ne- yes. In case you were wondering, we are totally opposite personalities. Right. So Literally. I love to entertain. Yes, I love to do. be around people. I love to cook and bake and I love to do all of that. I, I truly do. It's, it's so much fun and it just gives me life. My husband, on the other hand, there's Loves a, to do all the, the cooking and the baking and the eating, just not with other people. <laughs> well, there's a it's the theory of the conservation of like psychic entropy, right? So I don't when, know what you just so said. So when you go into a, when you're in a psychic crowded space, entropy? you like Is draw energy from the room, <gasps> right? You love being around people. It jazzes you up it, and it sucks the life out of me. So my, basically my <laughs> life energy transfers to you in crowded oh my you know, social situations and I'm just sitting there going. Is that the official psychological? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, she, you, it drains the life energy out of me and goes wow. to you. And you come home and you're like jazzed up, like that was great. And I'm just like, I have used all of, <laughs> all my, of my words, words for the day. I, need I a just snack. want to, I want a snack <laughs> and, and go to go to, to bed. bed. Yes. Anyway, so over the course of our 35 year marriage at the taping of this podcast, it's been 35 years. 
Can you still do you we still say had, taping? Does that make oh, us I'm sorry. old? I don't know. Uh, at the podcast recording, recording. <laughs> sorry, taping. Yes, yes we My are 80s that self old. Showed. <laughs> Be kind. This rewind. Idea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about from a Christian perspective that entertaining is what? It is an expression of Christ's love, right? Whenever, I mean, you look at as Catholics, we look at the the altar, right? We we go to Mass every Sunday, we break bread together as a community, yes. right? And and we receive our Lord in the in the Eucharist. But the outward symbol is bread and and you're at a table right? The altar is a table. And, and so we break bread together. And the idea that you open your door and you allow sometimes strangers, which really drives Jerry nutty, or you allow others that you know, that you love in your life to come in, into your home, into this intimate sanctuary, right? That shows who you are and your personality and how you've chosen to decorate it, and you you ask them to the table and then you feed them and that's a pretty radical act of kindness wouldn't you say yes let's discuss this for just a second so only my wife when we were giving a talk at mason not last year the year before at thanksgiving at the end of our talk right this is a room full of i don't know 70 college kids and we knew like three of them that had been in youth ministry with us. Yes. And my wife, because she is my wife and she takes her Christian ministry of hospitality seriously, says, by the way, if any of you don't have anywhere to go to th- go, f- you're not able to go home for Thanksgiving. You don't have anywhere else to go. Just come to our place. You should have seen Jerry. And face. I go, well, <laughs> I, well, I kept my poker face, but as we're going to the car, I'm like, are you kidding? What if somebody actually says yes? They did. And she's like, well, it'll be great. And I'm like, no. We don't know them. I'm Are like, they an axe murderer? What if they're an axe murderer? No, they're a or college what if they're student. worse? What if they're a vegan? <laughs> I'm like, no. I am not eating tofurkey. A vegan is worse than an axe On Thanksgiving, murderer? yes. Who's with me on this? Oh my I don't need like a vegan. Oh, like I'm a vegan and I'm dairy free and I'm I'm like. <laughs> then you need to go. Well, somewhere here, else. here's some salad. <laughs> but they did this. The, two two people. Yep, two young ladies. Two young had ladies. No place to be. Came over and I'm like, and they were so excited because of course. I put them to work. They were in the kitchen oh, peeling yeah, potatoes they come with in, me. And I'm I'm just standing here going, what is happening <laughs> in my house? And Mary's like, okay, uh, you know, whatever her name was. Here, you you peel potatoes and you do this. And they were they were digging it. They thought this was the coolest thing. So Mary puts them to work. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go sit down now. And, and Mary's like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, honey. Why don't yeah, you, you need just to get out of the kitchen? Just get out of the kitchen. We got this. We got this. And we did. It was a beautiful meal. That was a wonderful meal. And we learned all about And then, you know, we had like dessert. Them, their and family. You know, they talked and then they got up and left. And guess yeah. what? And and then Jerry wanted a snack and to go to bed. <laughs> True, but I couldn't because I had dishes. Genghis Khan had gone through my kitchen and like <gasps> I dirtied help. every Listen, dish. When we are at when it's a, a holiday like that, I help do the dishes. Well, you have to. I have to because <laughs> Because you just cook with abandon. You're like I, Abandon. I do cook with abandon, and and and, and I'm I do like, most things in life with abandon. Oh, you got that right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so yes, you have actually invited strangers, strangers into our, our home, home and fed them, and then you actually sent them home with a doggy bag I too, did, because think... we we don't just feed them; we send them home with leftovers. Right. Th- that's the whole point. <laughs> you you take care of them. You took it. We took care of their hearts for the day. We took care of their tummies for the day. They were missing their families, but they couldn't get back for the holidays. So we were rather we amusing. were their families, and we were we are we tend to be rather entertaining in those situations. Dinner at a floor show. At a floor a show. Bunch. And it was beautiful. And I um, we should do it more often. You will have a stroke, but <laughs> we should do. it more often we might want to vet because you know the concept is deeply the concept of of entertaining with intention is deeply rooted in the belief that every shared meal is you know you're sharing the love of god with another person that's true jesus did love to party right he He went to the wedding feast turned water into wine boom Boom. he fed the five thousand loaves and fishes boom yep 
And then you have, you know, the Last Supper. True. Where he gave us him. True. So you And then know, after his resurrection, what do he, we find out? He ate baked fish. Jesus grills. He does. That's right. It's in the gospel. He There was a charcoal fire. He says, come get breakfast because I have grilled it for you. <laughs> yep. But- so the purpose, uh, the this idea of the purposeful entertaining coming back around away from the grilling, um, <laughs> which is part of your entertaining sometimes as you grill. We're grilling tonight. It's going to be really yummy. Is that it acts as a bridge, right? That it fosters communication. It fosters community. It strengthens families. It strengthens bonds. It offers comfort, right? And I think celebration. that's why they call it comfort food. I know. And life's various seasons. And it's not about how extravagant the event is, is it? That's good, because we don't do extravagant. So, well, no. I, we have done extravagant. I mean, Thanksgiving is rather extravagant meal for us. Well. Because it's Thanksgiving. Okay. But, I mean, we've done cocktail parties. We've done New Year's Eve gatherings. We've oh, done. Oh, that's right. The very. The progressive dinners. Do you remember the progressive dinners? Oh, my god. That gosh. we used to do. So, a progressive dinner, it was one of our favorite things in the Navy, and we did it a couple times here with our family group, is you start at one person's house for cocktails and, and appetizers. Apps, and then, as apps. we called them back and then. then Everybody gets into like, well, they all had the big van. So, because they all had a billion kids. So, we get into a van and then we go to the next person's, whoever's hosting the main course. And then we go to whoever's hosting the dessert. And when you do it in a neighborhood, in a Navy neighborhood, you're all usually living on the same block in Navy housing. That's right. So, so you, you literally can walk, walk, which is good well, because you start with cocktails. Yes. You know, and you end with cocktails. And you end with, with after bourbon. dinner drinks. Yes. yes. It's very good. But oh, I forgot. Remember that was that? a lot of fun. Oh, my gosh. It was so, we just went up and around the circle. And it was just, we had apps one year. One year we did the um, the main course where we borrowed our neighbor's tent and we strung it with Christmas lights and they we remember we were outside oh, in our little right. backyard. Up, yes, yes. And um and so we've done that. I mean it's just so much and then everybody comes in and and you're 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 looking at how everybody else entertains and and what their signature dish is and what their signature drink is and it just learn about people. It's really cool. I remember you should do that those. again. But it makes everyone that enters your home feel like they're family, feel like they're welcome. Does that mean I can are. put them to work doing dishes? Absolutely. Cool. Every person that's ever been in our home after dinner has always offered to help with the dishes. And I have to say, it, it really is heartening when you and like some of our, our, some of the husbands, you guys will be like, ladies, go into the living room. We'll, you know, we'll start the tea kettle and we'll do the dishes. Like you and Mark, you get in there and do the Just dishes. Just to be clear. And, you're not drinking tea. You're I, drinking I, I after do bourbon. dishes because nobody loads the dishwasher but me. Oh, my gosh. For not being an engineer, you are an OCD engineer when it comes to the dishwasher. That's right. Because in any marriage, there are two types of people. There's the person that loads the dishwasher like an engineer and a person that loads the dishwasher like a raccoon on crack. <laughs> <laughs> and you can guess which one is which in this relationship. Oh, my gosh. I'm a raccoon. <laughs> I'm when you try when to load the dishwasher, the dishwasher. When you try to load I just the dishwasher. put the dishes in to get no, them no, clean. No, no, no. You, you have to stack them a certain way oh to fit the most Sweetheart, dishes in the dishwasher. If you, if that is, as for 35 years, I have not argued about that. That's right. I have perfected. If you want to do the dishes, do the dishes, baby. Dishes. Yeah, I know. Done. Thank you. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> the Tetris of dishes. A raccoon on crack. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good to know. Good to know. Another thing about entertaining, bringing it back around away from the raccoon, <laughs> is it's a beautiful way to show stewardship of what God has blessed you with. You know, you get to use your home, you get to entertain and cook and use your financial resources to give a gift of self, of time, of effort. And it doesn't, the, the thing is, is that it doesn't have to be fancy. Like we've done pizza on paper plates. True. I mean, we we actually have done a lot of actual no kidding ministry over meals, right? Oh, Remember yeah. when we used to be marriage mentors? Mm -hmm. That's a, have we done a podcast about we, I, that? We have. Experience? We 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 fold that in. Yes. They, okay. People, the people um, know. 
we always have had our couples over for dinner. I mean, we just finished RCIA. We were RCIA sponsors this year. Uh, made it through the three Scrutinies. and a half hours of oh, Easter, the Easter Vigil. Vigil. Vigil Beautiful. Mass. Haven't gone to one of those in quite a while. We haven't been in a few years, yeah. Keep praying. But you know what? Keep praying for my back. I Oh, please. You you sat in a cushy chair. You were in a cushy seat. I, You're complaining about your back. Do you need to bring your osteoporosis cushion? No, with you I to was sit extremely on? thankful that the pews in our in our church in our new had, church have cushions. Cushions because my tushy needed some oh cushy. Wow. <laughs> Raccoons on crack. A tushy is needing cushy. Well, I, I mean, I don't even so know this is the happening. first. I, so I okay. Okay, I'm sorry. We're we're digressing here. This is a ping pong ball moment. I Shocked know. I am. Do do I remember? Do you remember? I mean, it was 25 do years ago when I came in the church. The 21st of September. Yes, go ahead. Um, <laughs> you don't even after know what each to do with reading, that. did we do like a psalm? Yes, a, a psalm. It was a, a responsorial psalm. psalm yes, after dear. each reading, every single one. I. Don't remember. Yes, that. that's the proper course of doing it. I know that during COVID they shortened some things in the liturgy, but this this year's liturgy is. The I mean, this was the liturgy. full meal deal, bringing oh, yeah. it back around to the concept of, hospita of hospitality. The full meal deal, like seven readings, seven responsorial psalms, then an seven prayers, and, gospel. and I'm like, it was beautiful. Wow. But it didn't feel like three and a half hours. Oh, yes, it did. No, it didn't. Oh, yeah. It, it did. didn't to me. I was just like, usually by the second reading, I'm I'm fighting sleep. But I wasn't. I was so in. And and I was listening okay, well, to let's everything. Okay, be honest. You don't sleep anyway, so it, it, <laughs> you're not a fair assessment. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Now bring it back to ministry. So we and stewardship and stewardship. So we we we've, we've done. Uh, yeah, we we found found we found that it was. It's always so. It it's always so much better to get to know somebody over or to talk meal. to somebody over a meal, right? Particularly when you're like like we did uh, when we were doing marriage mentoring, and you have this this couple, and of course they're waiting to see what you're going to. Yeah, do. Yeah, they think they think dinner is a test that they have to pass. It is a test. <laughs> they just don't know it because we're very subtle. And I don't know who in this house is subtle. You don't think I was subtle with our <sighs> with our couples? I thought I was very subtle. No, my love. Oh, was I not subtle? You were not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it is not in your DNA to be subtle. But we had very good conversations over a meal. We did. And we would ask uh, you know, fairly simple questions. The whole point of of when you're doing ministry when you're sharing uh you know being a good steward of what the lord has blessed you with is you do a lot more listening than you do talking right you allow your guest to share themselves with you to share their heart with you to share their difficulties with you it it's a beautiful opportunity for us as host and hostess to hold space for them right and for their story what does hold space mean what does that mean exactly you it like means i'm i do because i to hold space for someone means I am not judging them. Uh, I just receive and hold what they are sharing with me. Uh, I don't attach myself to it. I don't judge it. I don't place any emotional, anything of myself upon it. Uh, I simply hold that space for them. And then when they go, that goes with them, right? Because a lot of times when you're doing, like when I do my mentoring or you know, any, if you ask any spiritual director or life coach, you, a lot of times when you're, when your person that you're working with is going through a crisis, sometimes you can become very attached to that crisis and you get worried about them and you lose sleep about them and you're trying to figure it out. And that's not your job. Your job is to hold space. Your job is to hold that for them while they're with you. And then it goes home with them. Like it's not yours to carry. Gotcha. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Okay. You are very wise in the ways of holding the space. I've just been taught well. So me, I just kind of sit there and do this like a cocker spaniel. I just kind of cock my head, go, hmm. Mm hmm Well, hmm. and it, it it gives you an opportunity hmm. for actual conversation. So you can ask questions and and you know, you share your stories, you share your your stories of your childhood, you share oh, your stories shared of lots our marriage. Of stories over the years over oh my tables, gosh. haven't we? We have indeed. Sometimes Mo we've even danced on the tables. I'm just saying. Some of them not suitable for a, a general no. PG audience. Just no. saying. 
We used to have some humdinger conversations during those progressive dinners in the Navy, didn't we? Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Well, you had such a diverse group of people with as far as, you know, most of them, I would say, were Christians. But politically, we were all so very different. Some were very uh, open to families. Others were like, we're never having kids. I mean, it was just very. It was a challenge to find a neutral ground. And that's another thing that um, I was taught way long time ago. When my grandma Green, my dad's uh, grandma was still alive, Grandma Betty, she used to say, when I think I was in the fourth or fifth grade when she told me this, she said, a young lady is always prepared for an event <laughs> by reading the first page of the Wall Street Journal the New York Times, the society pages, and whatever sports page you'd like to write. Because that way you could have a conversation about, you could go a little bit, you know, it's shallow conversation, but it's a conversation that most people will enter into with you. Like they're going to talk about their favorite sports team. Um, you can talk about Do they still make politics. society pages? Oh yeah, they sure do. Really? Uh-huh. Hmm. And then of course there's now a lot of this is online. So, and that's how you prepare for, for a gathering. Like what's going on in the sports world? What's going on in the political world? Not that you really want to talk about that, but you know, that does bring up prepared. a good point though. I and mean, how to have a good conversation is kind of a lost art these days. Well, it's right? not an argument and it's not a debate. No, I mean, just talking yeah. about, you know, sit around and talk about the weather Old women sit around and talk about old men. Oh my gosh, you were so off key there. I didn't I know. know what that was. Well, sorry. I just, but, but I mean, just that small talk. That's from uh, Randy Travis. Randy Travis. Uh, Going to love you forever and ever. and ever. That's right. Forever and ever. Amen. That's right. Um, yeah, old women sit Gonna and Going to love talk. you till. Okay, stop. You're off remember. key. You're remember. killing me here. Oh, sorry. You're killing me, Smalls. Killing you, Smalls. But I mean, really, the <laughs> lost art, I mean, people, it has been my observation as the Grachi historian over the last 40 years that people, people well, their have whole forgotten life the fine art of, of making conversation, s conversation of making small, small talk. talk. You know? They're, they're, we don't even do it in like, we used to, you know, when you would go, well, I would go when we would visit your parents, okay? Small town, Oklahoma. And your mother would be in the resource, which was the grocery store, and somebody from church would see her, Eleanor Pearl, da, 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 da. <laughs> and they would just chat for like two or three minutes across the ground beef. Before they remembered you were there? <laughs> oh, no. I just watched in awe. And then they would go on. And it's so lovely to see you. We'll see you at church on Sunday. Like, that's small talk, right? Like, today- It was we, an obligation, too. It's not like nowadays when we're in the Wegmans. You, don't, going, even, you oh, don't even quick, make eye contact. Turn, turn around. Go to the other aisle. Oh, no. You couldn't do that. You couldn't do that in Collinsville, Oklahoma. If you they see you at the resource, at yeah. Oh, they, then you say you hello. You better say hi. Hey. Now, if you were my mom, sometimes they didn't see you on Sunday <laughs> because that was my mother. That was your mother. Anyway. She just wanted them all saved. So. She's a good Lutheran. But, yeah. I, but uh, the, we, so we've the, been to a lot of events. Like, yeah. you know, not, I mean, when we host, you have no choice to talk because you're coming in with my wife. <laughs> I mean, let's just be brutally honest here. You you cannot come in and you spend don't, you're not quiet. Five you're not allowed. minutes. Well, it depends. I have to warm up to people though. Right? Like Okay, the, but the, you warm up a lot faster than you used to. Well, like I've there practiced. was in the beginning of our marriage, you literally would stare at people like they were an axe murderer and you were next on the list. I was just keeping my eye on them. I no, it was a resting Jerry face and you had perfected it because you felt like if you could do that, then they wouldn't come talk to you and you were fine with that. I remember well, it worked, one time, didn't it? I remember, yes, it did. It was very effective. It still is. I remember we were at a Navy event. Maybe it was the dining out, something. It was fancy. Maybe it was Navy ball. I think it was Navy ball. And there was a group of new aviators that had just gotten their wings and just showed up at the, at the squadron. And so they didn't know us. And I was uh, at the buffet line. No, because it was dining out. So it was a sit down dinner. I don't know where I was. I at the coffee. I don't even know. Anyways, this this wife, new wife, was asking me some questions about the commissary. 
And so I'm answering the question. She's like, oh, you know, is your, is your husband here? And I'm like, yes, he's standing over, you know, by the door. And she looked and she had met you already. Her husband had introduced you to her. And she's like, the two of you are married? <laughs> like, for real? Like, that's your husband? And I just looked at her and I was like, why? And she goes, oh, if the two of you were standing in the room together, I would have never put you together. I'm like, is that good or wow. is that bad? And she goes, well, he just seems so grouchy. <laughs> that was your, like, that should have been your call sign. What was your call sign? Beast. <laughs> Lena Beast. Really? Could have been grouchy. That would have worked. That would have worked because you were. But yeah, no, I, okay. So entertaining with a purpose and a passion. It's a good thing. And I remember Ina Garten, the barefoot contessa, she says all the time, it doesn't have to be fancy. If you want to make meatloaf, then make meatloaf. If you want to order pizza, then order pizza. The point is, is that you're opening your door and you're welcoming someone into your home. You know, and as making long as you feel, feel welcome, making them feel seen and known and loved. That so they have remember worth that and value. famous New Year's Eve party we had? Uh, uh, we've had a few. First time, no, the first time that we had all of our our young millennial friends. Our young millennial friends that we met on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And, and we invited them to like a New Year's Eve party. Because that's your birthday. Because that's my birthday. And I'm like. And they all came. I'm like, do you really think they'll come? I mean, they don't even know who we are. I mean, yeah, we've, <laughs> you know, we followed each other on Instagram. But like. We've talked. I mean, we've we talked, had FaceTime. We had FaceTime. But wow, you think they'll come? Oh, they all showed up and they were all like dressed. Oh, it was like, a fancy party. Fancy party in our living room. And I'm like, and and it was, oh, it was we a lot of fun. such a f- good time. Because, um, you know, we had our little horse d'oeuvres and we had. Those know, are hors d'oeuvres for people that speak English. Had our little <laughs> bar and it was just, it was a great time. It was. And I'm like. Now, of course, we were, as always, the oldest ones in the room. The oldest ones in the room, and most of them could have been our children. Mm-hmm. But um, it was just fascinating. We talked about everything. We talked about politics. We talked about religion. We talked about all the taboo things. We talked about marriage and children. And, and, and of course, in any conversation with a large group of married women, within five minutes, they are talking about birthing and babies. Oh, you know, well, there I was in the stirrups about to, and the guys are like, Jer, yeah, let's go refresh our drinks in the other room <laughs> because they're about to talk about birthing and babies and they're not going to leave out any nope. details. <laughs> it's a monumental moment in a woman's life. She remembers all of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the Howard Cosell play-by-play. And there's the head coming out. (laughs) Did it come out like a raccoon on crack? (laughs) Actually, I think a couple of them, that was was kind of their birth experience, you know? Quick births. Quick births. It's Mm -hmm. like, um, but So what is your favorite thing about entertaining? Food. (laughs) Shock. Shocked I am. Well, I, but, I mean, you're right. We don't, I mean, we don't cook fancy. We don't cook fancy. Well, we can. We just choose not to. But you have like your go-to recipes that are like just awesome. And okay. Everybody, like what? What's your favorite? Lasagna. Okay. But that's for a dinner. What about like hors d'oeuvres? Like we're having like a cocktail party. Oh. What are the apps, baby? Tell me the apps. Little piggies in a blanket. Oh my God. That's my favorite. Those little, those little queechy things that you get. I don't. You that's, make an that's awesome. Frozen. I don't. You do make that. an awesome sausage stuffed mushroom. I do. That's super good. Uh, my spinach favorite artichoke is spinach artichoke dip. Or hot my, crab dip. My mama's hot crab. Elma Elma Pearl's, Pearl's hot, hot crab, crab dip. dip. I well, make a great green goddess dressing. Well, for now the of veggies. course you're you're all having shark ootery. Shark, ootery, baby, shark, yeah, but yeah, and then, but no, you do, you do, you have your go-to meals. Now, of course, Thanksgiving, it's the whole shtick, like, you know, we have everything, but let's see, what is it you usually, you usually make something I try to make, I try to make something for everyone. So we have people that come to our home that are gluten-free, that really are vegans and dairy-free sometimes and vegetarians. And so I always check. 
That is you definitely know? when I am putting on my hospitality hat because I'm is. like, we're what? We're gluten free, dairy free, yep. vegan, and sugar free, and sugar free. But we're gonna have dessert. Oh, but I I make really here. Here's an apple. <laughs> wow, I have never served an apple. I've served gluten free, sugar free, dairy free gingerbread. I've served, uh, you know, flourless chocolate tart. Okay, tort. the flourless chocolate tort, tart, mm-hmm. whatever. That was pretty good. The, black the gingerbread? Lemon. No. You, I, you don't like gingerbread to start with. I don't. <laughs> and then you make it gluten free, dairy free, vegan. It's just like, and why do you And what did I have so for much? you? I had fresh fruit. The and apple a, and a creme brulee. It was berries and creme brulee. Okay, the little the little flame thing was kind of cool. <laughs> oh that was kind of cool. And that's fancy. That's a fancy dessert. Uh, that is. You know. So. That is. But most of the time, like I'll make. Like we just had people over this week, and we made uh, chicken and rice, which is a, a casserole dish, right? Right. And we had fresh green beans and rolls. And Weirdly, people salad. love having meatloaf. See, I thought that was oh, like a midwestern a Oklahoma thing, but like, like when we cooked, e- we just recently cooked. Everybody's for the, like the college. Wow, students. meatloaf! I haven't had that in a long time. You guys, time. we cooked for ninety college students. Yeah, see, we don't do twenty-eight mere, pounds of ground beef. We don't do mere hosting. My Honeyland does <laughs> industrial scale hosting. Oh, you need to cook for eighty? No problem. We got your back. <laughs> we got it. I'm like, we didn't have any leftovers, like none. We had mashed potatoes. Okay, green no, wait beans, a minute. College kids, mashed potatoes, shocking. And and meatloaf. And I thought there'd be meatloaf left over. I'm like, they're not no. gonna. But we, when we asked them what they wanted, that's what they wanted us no, to cook for them. These are college this boys. This week we're doing um, sloppy joes, chips, yes. and um, fresh veggies, like a like a crudite, which is a chopped crudite. veggie, yeah. veggies and dip. Yeah, um, and it's pretty simple this week. Oh yeah, but but I mean, yeah, the when so. So when the boys were going through the line, you know, everybody gets ration. Not not the first time through. The first time through, everybody gets ration to make sure that everybody gets some, right? So the boys are looking and they're looking. And I'm like, <laughs> dudes, don't worry. There'll probably be seconds. So they're like, okay, thank you, sir. And they walk through. And then, you know, everybody goes through, right? And then we're like, okay, so we kind of consolidate and put everything yeah, together. And then we're like, two different lines. okay, you can, uh, you can tell them now that there's seconds if you want. And like every boy just go, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> And like, yeah, like the Genghis Khan and the hordes just, and I'm like, well, honey, we don't have to worry about nope. what to do with the leftovers because they were gone. Yeah. And then there was the leftover summer, salad though, just saying. Oh, but, the greens, yes. But the meatloaf but the and mashed beans, potatoes. And the green beans were gone. And the meatloaves and mashed potatoes were oh, gone. Oh no, all the, all the stuff we brought Except was. Except for the green salad that was, you know, the, and there was, was maybe two, two or three servings of that. Not very much yeah. left at all. So anyways, that is. The idea behind leaving the door open and a seat at the table so that you would share your gifts, your talents. And if you're not someone who cooks, that is why there is the Wegmans ready-made section um, or, or order out. You know, I mean, we've done that before, too, where where we order subs in or for a football game or something. We've done, you know, we've ordered from an Italian restaurant. We've ordered from a Chinese restaurant. Yep. We had pho from pho forever. Oh, love so good. So good. But um, yes, it is definitely your gifting. It is your. I love, I love, 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 it. love, yes, it, love it, love it, love it. You love Jerry loves the food. I love the food. And well, now let's, be, let's be fair. Okay. Now if we're hosting something that is like not just, you know, our friends coming over to hang out and eat subs and watch TV or something, you do have a tendency to, sometimes to be Martha Stewart on crack. <laughs> I have a tendency all the time to do that. You know, I mean, let's go with that raccoon on crack theme. Like, you are here and it's like, you know, Pharaoh building the, yes, I said that. Pharaoh Pharaoh. building the pyramids. You're like, okay, honey, you got to do this. We got to vacuum. We got to clean. We got to wipe this down. And and I'm just like. We start getting ready. When we have, when we have company for dinner, we start getting ready 72 hours beforehand. Yes. Yeah. Now there's like ma- Eisenhower invading Normandy. <laughs> but there's also, but that's like for like a dinner party. There's also when when friends come over and they call, you know, I'll call Christine at like noon and be like, "What are you guys doing for dinner night?" Oh, I don't know. I think we're I think we're available. I'm like, just come on over, and I just put on two more hamburgers or I put on two more pieces of fish, and you just 
Nobody vacuums. There's there's laundry in the laundry basket, but you're sharing a meal with your best friends, and that's kind of cool. Yes, but when we have anything approaching not that, <laughs> yeah, you become a little particular. I am always particular when it comes to entertaining, yes. Oh, yeah. Because you always want to make sure you have enough food, and you you want you want to present your best self. Have we ever run out of food? No. No, we have not. No. Although there have, I remember in youth ministry once, for some reason we made um, so that I think oh. we were making for forty kids, and we were going to make beef stew. We forgot to turn the oven. No, on. no, no. The ovens broke. We everything was on, and the gas was going. And but the but the beef stew wasn't cooking. Oh, that's and the right. it, the igniter had broke had broken, and so we I like scrambled. Oh. and you ran to the giant <laughs> and got the grocery store and got like sub sandwich rolls. And I would like about like I was throwing bread and bologna and cheese in the cart <laughs> like a madman. And because uh, mass was over in like ten minutes, and we had oh, nothing to feed them because the, the beef now, stew was Now of course the raw. youth minister was happy because we, we sent him home with the beef stew. He ate beef stew for like months. Yeah. Well, he had, he was living with like four other guys yeah. at the time. So he's like, here, we have beef stew. Here, you guys can eat this week. And he's like, really? I said, well, you have to finish cooking, cooking it. Cooking it. You can't eat it like this. You must. And and of course he's like, well, well, what do I do? And my honey lamb is like, you put it in a, you put it in a crock pot, put it in a crock pot, or you can buy the aluminum hours. pan, right. cover the it, oven for 350. Four. Yeah. yeah she, Yes, she wrote it on the foil. I did. It was a sticky, was on the, yeah. sticky note. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's that's what entertaining with purpose. I just hospitality hit the hit the table. Sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> that's what hospitality yes. is in our home. Yes, and it's it's. I think it's a beautiful thing, and I think it's wonderful that it's an extension of God's love for us that we get to share with other people. That's right. So while eating sausage stuffed mushrooms <laughs> and a really yummy cocktail. Anyways, it is now, friends, time for what? The not so newlywed, newlywed game. Okay, hit me. Hit me one more. Hit me with your best shot. Hit me, baby, one more time. You're not singing today. You I've told been me singing. I was off key. Well, you're like, hit I'm me gonna with your love best you shot. forever. Dun, 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 dun. Hit me with your best I shot. I just hit you with my okay. best shot. How would you spend Jerry Don Lenneberg? Your perfect Sunday. Oh, I'm here. I'm making a podcast with you. That is a BS flag that I am throwing. Well, actually, <laughs> my perfect Sunday is a hospitality Sunday. We'd, we'd, we'd hang out with our friends. We would, you know, talk about all the things, laugh. Play they would dominoes. Play dominoes. There might be tasty adult beverages. And then we would grill meat on fire and eat with yummy side dishes. <laughs> That's true. That is your perfect Sunday. Yeah. I would say for me, that's, yeah, either either that or we order out and we read. We go on the front porch and just chill out. That works too. After mass. Of course, mass is always first. Yes. Yeah. Unless we went the night before. And we're going to have to take certain critters out for a certain something. Yeah, you better not say it. I know. Because they I speak say English. It, yes. We have learned that dogs have vocabularies limited to about eight words, mm-hmm. which they speak fluently. <laughs> They no, do. I'm sorry. They hear fluently. They yeah. don't speak. Well, you but never they know. Hear fluently. We don't interpret well. Anyways, yes. all right. Well, excellent. That's your perfect Sunday. So, my second question for you is: What sort of family did you imagine you would have when you were little? Go ahead, be honest. Um, Jerry did not want to get married. And when Jerry I was did little, not I, want yeah, to have yeah, children. Yeah, I, I was going to say when I was little, I did not ever envision myself actually being married and having children at all. Ever? It would be highly unlikely. When was the first time you thought, oh, this might actually, like, be a thing? Um, probably, <laughs> probably my, you know, my senior year. My senior year, second semester senior year at the academy. Oh, with me? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's nice that it was with me. <laughs> well, yeah, duh. <laughs> um, for me, I always knew I, I wanted to be married. I wanted to have a lot of babies. I played with baby dolls. I played with Barbie dolls. I played kitchen. I played house. I played. And how many outfits did your Barbie dolls have? Oh, they had an entire trunk. Like 
That should have been a sign to me. I should have asked that question to you. How many outfits did your Barbies have? That would have told me a few my things. My Barbies were very well, and I learned how to sew. I still I still dress my Barbies up into high school because I was taking a sewing course. So I used them as a little mannequin when I wanted to see if like fabric would work together, like the patterns and stuff. Hmm. That's what I did. Hmm. I always wanted to have I wanted to have the white picket fence. I wanted to have a beautiful home. A stud of a husband and... Oh, well, you got one out of three. <laughs> there you go. That is incorrect. We have a fence. It's we just our neighbors. Not, yeah, I was going to say, we do not have we a sh- white picket fence. We do not. We did at one point. We did in... in... No, we had a piece of crap No, not thing. here. We did not have chain link here. We had chain link in Maryland. Here oh. we had wooden, but it was rotting when we first moved oh, in. piece of crap. And we had the white picket fence in, in Little Creek, dear, in the front of the house. Did we? I yes. have no memory of that, Senator. And, well, you were usually in the middle of the Mediterranean, so I'm not surprised. Oh, yeah, well. Anyways, but no, I always imagined having having a family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you ask my mom, that's what she'll tell you. Mary Beth never ne- wanted to be anything but a, mo- a wife and mom. Mm-hmm. And then I became a wife and mother, and I was like, And here we Some are, days, 35 years later. This is not so... <laughs> Not so bueno. I don't know. <laughs> I should have maybe uh, considered that whole becoming a nurse thing or a teacher. I don't know. You could never become a nurse. I would be an excellent nurse. You would, but you'd never pass chemistry. No, I wouldn't. I would probably kill someone um, with, with their drugs. <laughs> Milligram, microgram. What is that? Let bad. me see. Let's Let not. me think. Okay. When, when letters and numbers meet in mathematics, yeah, I'm that's out. not good. Yeah. Okay. Last question. <laughs> What's something I do that drives you nuts? I have to pick one? (laughs) Only one? Do I have to pick just one? What's something I do that drives you nuts? Oh, I know exactly what it is. Okie dokie. After you get out of the shower in the morning, you throw the towels (laughs) down the stairs to say, hey, honey, put these in the laundry. Thunk. And you've hit me like three times because I'm standing here because I'm like. I've been married to you for 35 years and I've only hit you three times. But you you like throw the towels. I'm like, you could just <laughs> put them on the floor of the bathroom. And then when you come down, grab them as you come down. But you throw them <laughs> down and it is like, oh, it is my huge pet peeve. Huge pet peeve. If that's your only pet peeve. No, I said pet peeve. I, All right, go ahead. What else? Give me another one. Hit me with your No, that's a big shot. one right okay, now. Okay, that's a big that, one right that's now. That's a big one right now. <laughs> that you crazy? Drives me crazy. Okay. The one thing. She drives me, me crazy. crazy. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Go ahead. Your turn. Um, the one that has driven me crazy for 35 years. Don't go with the toilet seat. Pick something else. No, <laughs> that does drive me nuts. No, it's you. I know exactly where you've been in this house. I told in you why kitchen. I did that. No, it's so that he- So I don't so you know if I've been kidnapped. I told you that. That is not. Yes. Legit. Yes, I leave a trail so that if I'm kidnapped, you'll know exactly when and in what room I was taken by the ninjas. <laughs> Like you go in the kitchen and I can say like, oh, Jerry made some instant oatmeal this morning. Oh, look, Jerry couldn't find the sugar for the coffee. Oh, look, how many coffee cups did Jerry go through? Two, two coffee cups he went through. Look, he had some some um, right. granola for breakfast. So then you would say, look, he was taken right during the middle of the granola. <laughs> He was boring the and then, and then you'd go, look, see, there's the towels on the floor that he picked up. <laughs> and you will know that I got kidnapped somewhere between picking up the towel and getting the granola. I cannot. I cannot. I this is too much. <laughs> Anyways. Thank you. Oh, what else drives me nuts? The toilet seat. Because I fell in the freaking toilet. Okay, you that's moron. a great story. We'll we'll tell that story later. It was No, we've already well, told that story on some podcast somewhere. It was one of the anyway. funniest moments in our marriage. Still is <laughs> in our marriage. No, in, our in marriage. your life. In thirty oh, in your yeah. life, not in mine. In it was not years, enjoyable. It, is, it 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 is still it still makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm so glad it makes you laugh. It does. What else drives me crazy? 
Um, Wait, I, I only picked <laughs> one. You're on like three. Wait, I think this is grossly unfair. Go ahead. What else drives you crazy about me? Go ahead. I'm okay. a big girl. I can take it. Um, hmm. Let me think. If you have to think about it, then I'm uh, doing pretty well. Overall, yeah. You do have this annoying thing about, like, do you ever hear the joke that a guy the guy and his wife were sitting there watching TV. He heard his phone go off in the kitchen. He got he got he got up to check it what to see what the tech said. And the tech said, Hey, as long as you're in the kitchen, can you bring back the chips? Yes. That's you. I know. You're like, oh honey, are you up? Are you oh, up? by the way, since you're up, can you go get me this some water. or that? Some water, cup make a tea. cup of hot tea. Yeah. And I'm like, honey, I was just getting okay, whatever. Never mind. <laughs> you do that to me all the time. I do. It's like, oh, honey, were you going to go to the bathroom? Oh, well, while you're up. While you're up. After you wash your hands, could you please? Yeah, I'll pause for you. (laughs) See, at least we have, we can do that these days. We can pause the television. We can pause the television while you're up getting me a snack or, you know, a cup of tea or something. So funny. Anyways, do you have any other questions you'd like to ask on the not so newlywed, newlywed game? Oh, (laughs) this is great. Okay. What is one article of clothing that someone could wear that would make you walk out on a date with them? Ladies, gentlemen, this could be an interesting one course. article of clothing that someone would wear that it would make me walk out. I guess when uh, if a guy, if you went out, if you were going out on a date with the guy, what would if he wore would make you go, uh-uh, wave off, wave off. <laughs> if he looked like a 70s porn star with his shirt wide open and multiple the gold chains. chains. Okay, you're dating yourself, dude. <laughs> Nobody does that anymore. Nobody did that when we were dating. Yeah, either. they did. Who? Oh, there's some guys in my high school that unbuttoned their shirts and did the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Three, you know, the bell would ring on Friday and you'd see a whole new personality. <laughs> Yeah, you, did, um, you did go to a big city school. That did not happen in Collinsville <laughs> High <laughs> School. Okay. Uh-uh. Well, I only dated, I literally went on five dates before uh-huh. I met you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go five ahead. dates. But conceptually, what would you tell young women? Here you go, because you get asked this question. Don't do the yoga pants. Come on. No, what would you tell young women if, if a young man is wearing that you oh, need if to reconsider he, okay. your choices? If he comes in. On a date. On a date. On a date. That you're not going to a sporting event where you are playing the sport. Right. Or on a sailboat. And he's wearing shorts and a t-shirt and like icky. Crocs. Oh. Crocs are a definite wave off as soon wave as those happen. Wave off. Wave off. Wave off so hard, so fast. If he's wearing that and like that happened to a friend of ours. She was going to the National Museum of Art, and then they were supposed to go get dinner. So she wore this really pretty sundress and wedge sandals and a sweater. And she was all, you know, because they were going out to dinner after the, and this is the art museum. So like people don't hang around the art museum typically in in shorts and a t-shirt. And he showed up in like cargo shorts with Birkenstocks and a t-shirt that had a hole in it. Okay, the cargo shorts, if it's summer. No. But not on a first No, date. and he had athletic socks on with the Birkenstocks. No, socks. that's a definite wave off. That's like the car that's like the Crocs. And she socks was and like, sandals? No. She wave was off. like, what what what? They did needless to say, she, she didn't make it. She, to no, dinner. she got a headache like yeah. halfway through the didn't make it to No. Dinner. And she she called us on the way home and she's like, You will not believe this. I like, remember oh my that. Gosh. I, yeah. so I was I was very gracious. I laughed my hand. <laughs> I laughed my butt off. And you were giving me the stink eye like you're like, not supposed you're not to do supposed this. You're not supposed to laugh. But you I'm wait like, till she, you hang up the funny. phone and then you can laugh. You don't laugh where it she was, can hear you. It was funny. All right, what about you? If some girl showed up in what? Dude, if some girl showed up in some bustier, you would have never left. You would have been I like, say, this I was, is great. Yo- when I was a young man, yoga pants would have been great. But oh we didn't do gosh. yoga pants when I was young. Jeans, though, those painted on jeans, those were good. Um, but those are not good. No, they were good when you're a midshipman. Oh, stop. Just saying. I, I don't know, because generally I would say that the young women, always, in, in my experience, always put more effort into looking good for a date. Now, of course, as a midshipman, you didn't have to worry about it because you had the uniform. Boom! You were good. <laughs> like, there was no question that you were uh-huh. going to look fine. Yes. Um, I can attest to that. Now, what was funny was when the, the young women would show up for a dance 
and have no freaking clue what they were doing. Yeah. And and it was so obvious. There is etiquette that they that goes with they that. you know they thought prom was like a formal dance, and I'm like, oh no, sweetheart, you're you're at the big leagues now. Now nah, this is in my head. Yeah, you I'm like, you don't no, this loud. is not your prom. This is like this is a navy ball. This is like a formal with dance. the receiving line. With, uh, yeah, um, yeah. With the superintendent. Yeah, that that there was a or co- it was the white glove ball where like yeah. you had to be in in. There's a couple of times that was super gloves. awkward. Yeah, but no. No, because most of, you know, most of the time, well, like, let's, let's give an example. When we were dating, see, you were always super cute because we were usually going to football games. Yes. So you knew that all I my- I never f- wore jeans. I always dressed up. You always dressed up, which was kind of funny because you ended up running the tailgate in like a, a blouse and a skirt. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, jeans and a sweatshirt would have been good. And you're like, oh. <gasps> You know, you were no, because I was on a date. I was on a date, but I'm like, yeah, but you're cooking for all my friends. You're running the tailgate. It was fine. And you're like, yeah, but I don't actually do anything. I just give instructions, this and is all correct. your friends do what I tell them. And I'm correct. like, this is true. Mm-hmm. It was. Very I did. True. I mean, I would bring the side dishes like from home. Yes, but then you would tell them, do this, do yeah. that. You set that up. You do that, and yeah. they're like, um, okay, and they Mary. look at me, and I'm like. Dude, do you want to eat? You want to eat? You do what, she, eat? You do what like, she says. Yes, and then do what she says. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the power of the girlfriend. Yes. Well, the girlfriend who could cook. Yeah. And knew how to entertain. entertain. Very nicely done. We have made it roundabout Boom! the circle. <laughs> Brought it back with around. Entertaining with intention. That's right. And you, what was your intention back then? To marry my midshipman. That's right. And I do believe I was successful. You were successful in that goal. In that goal. I was. Bada bing, bada mm-hmm. boom. But just to be clear, you pursued me. Oh, because I knew you could cook and entertain. <laughs> And you look darn good. And I, I'd be a good Navy wife. Like, I, I knew was, you would be a good Navy yeah. wife. And did was it okay for the 12 years we were in active duty? You were an excellent Navy wife. As the 12 margarita glasses in my house <laughs> could attest to, you knew how to host. Yes. Mm-hmm. Apparently with a lot of tequila. <laughs> Just saying. It was a deployment. You did deploy four times. Uh, you know, hey. Works for me. Girls so. got to chat. <laughs> yeah. Apparently Just you saying. chatted a we lot. Chatted. We did. Well, so. I got them on, on sale at HomeSense. So, you know. So here we are. Here we are. Anyways. All right, friends. We come to the end of another podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. On. The Mary. And Jerry. Podcast. Bada bump. And if you'd like to leave a review for us, or if you would like to, we would love it if you would subscribe and follow wherever you listen or watch your your podcasts on youtube spotify apple i didn't get the phone number i totally forgot but it'll be in our show notes yeah. which is a little paragraph underneath the description of the show um so you can give us a text oh or you a can phone call. dm us on instagram instagram at the mary and jerry podcast right it has been delightful to spend some time with you this afternoon i know you know what we're gonna go do now we are going to go and start the grill. That's right. And uh, while the grill is being prepared, I am going to go make potato salad and roasted carrots. Yes, food. And then we're going to barbecue some chicken. But it's just for us tonight. That's right. Which is fine. Which is or fine. for me. Having an in-home day. That's right. So until next week, y'all, blessings and grace. Take care. <laughs>